So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. iPhone 15 Pro Max versus iPhone 10s Max. Five years later, speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one can get there first. Now, both of these are rocking the latest iOS 17.1.2 that just got released. And this phone I covered on my second channel, the more Nick Ackerman channel, which is where I just cover some discussions and some other phones we don't really talk about much here. But I was surprised by how well it performed. Of course, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is going to turn on faster. And you can see we have a 6.5 inch display. We did go up to 6.7. I think we might see an ultra iPhone soon um, with maybe a 6.9 inch screen. But the iPhone 15 Pro Max definitely turning on much faster. Now, they both do have Face ID and that actually hasn't changed at all. This is a classic case of if it isn't broke, don't fix it. So. Um, really no issues there. However, we do have Face ID now on a Dynamic Island versus a notch here. Generally speaking, scrolling through the phones, you will notice that the iPhone 15 Pro Max definitely visually looks better and smoother, mostly due to the ProMotion display. An app library, though, it's not super smooth in app library for some reason. I don't know what that is, but um, it just doesn't look that much different in app library to me, um, scrolling up and down. But the overall, just going through the general software, what's shocking to me is that the iPhone XS Max, being five years old already, performs almost like day one. Now, me, I do have a little bit of an unfair advantage versus some of you out there who still have a XS Max and that I have 100% battery health, but it also makes it a little bit more fair of a comparison here in this speed test. Okay, so we have applications lined up on both the same. Let's get into the app test. We'll begin with calendar. You can see that's faster on the left. Let's go into clock here, about the same. Now in the regular applications, you're not gonna see a major difference. They don't really require much power for those. You'll see weather about the same there. Well, actually I think that was the left. We'll go into calculator, pretty much the same. So basic apps, nothing. We'll go into app store, it does load up some content. So this should be faster for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But like I said in my video, I'm shocked and surprised by how well the iPhone XS Max performs on 17.1.2, regardless of the fact that this doesn't have 5G. The general software, Apple is doing a good job with their older iPhones. So if you wanted to pick up like a 11 Pro, a 12 Pro Max with 5G, you know, those phones still have solid day-to-day -day performance, although we were having an issue loading up right there a minute ago. Let's go into Instagram. And you could see pretty good amount faster on the left. And you could see once loaded in though, not a major change there. So notice something here. If I'm able to get these similar speeds or just a couple seconds difference, that tells me one thing. What that tells me is that the iPhone, um, the XS Max is not really a phone that would slow you down too much in 2023, which is kind of impressive. Um, a lot of Android phones from this era wouldn't be quite as nice performing today and age. You'll see that's on the left. And this is on the left. Now where it really does see not a major difference there. Where it does make a big difference is in the 60 hertz versus the 120 hertz. Just like... So let's go into Amazon. And where it does make a big difference that was faster on the left is when you're doing things like looking at the ProMotion display. I mean, if you're gonna be looking at that, the ProMotion display makes the overall experience of the 15 Pro Max just feel smoother and snappier every day. But the XS Max is very similar to like a 15 Plus with its 60 Hertz. You can see right here, faster on the left. We'll go into Dead Trigger 2. And somebody said the other day that the animations they feel like are just very slow on iOS. And that could be playing into why you don't really see um, massive changes when it comes to every phone. Um, but I think you're, you've seen that trigger to win on the left. I think it's testing these older iPhones versus the 15 Pro Max. Now we're starting to see actual differences versus the newer ones. You could see much faster down the games, a much faster GPU in here as well. But again, even on casual games, you're gonna load these and perform better than the XS Max. Let's go into Temple Run 2. 
Um, the thing about the 10s Max though is that it feels it still feels nice. It's still a nice feeling phone here, five years later. But wow, blows away. I don't think I've ever seen a phone win so by so much in Temple Run Two, a pretty basic game. But the tennis or the tennis max just got blown away by the 15 Pro Max. There, not even close. Again, once in game, a little bit of chop there. There was a little bit of lag there. That's something I don't see often either. Let's go into PUBG Mobile. That was a little bit weird when I'm over here giving its giving its flowers for being so good. Um, definitely not. It's not 2018 good anymore, but it's it's decent. Like if you were like, let's say you had a tennis max. And you had to just wait a little while, like another six months to a year. I think you'd be fine using it. It's not going to be a terrible experience. Not even close to that. It actually is still a nice experience. More like a mid-range phone performance now, though. You could see 15 Pro Max is just waiting and waiting. So in PUBG, that performance difference might get you... You know what I mean. You're going to probably lose the match. In Call of Duty you're probably going to lose the match due to lag versus somebody who has a faster, more powerful, newer chip and GPU with better RAM. Uh, you've seen that, that the Geekbench 6, it's like Geekbench 5. Hold on. I actually have to, I'll be right back. I didn't put, they look the same. I didn't put Geekbench 6. I'll be right back. Hold so on. I'm actually going to show this while we're waiting. You see how long it took to download? We're going to take a look at how fast it, this downloads an application. So you can see Geekbench 6 is coming in here. Let's move it around while we're waiting and you'll see the load times not not very different from a newer iphone it's going to be more network dependent and since i already launched geekbench 6 here i'm going to go ahead and close it out i'll give this one it's installing so it definitely installs apps slower than iphone 15 pro max i'll give this one launch and then i'll close it out and then we'll go into geekbench 6 here you can still see faster because this app's already been optimized. They're taking a while on 15 Pro series. Let's go into 3D Mark, faster on the left. And you can see here also in wildlife, extreme is recommended for 15 Pro Max, not recommended on 10S Max. The recommended is just the regular wildlife. So that proves too, even the benchmark is recommending don't do a simple wildlife test on the new 15 Pro Max. Camera wise though, 10s Max is still usable, and there we go with iMovie on the left and speedtest.net over there on the left. So pretty decent performance on the 10s Max five years later, but cannot keep up and did not win against 15 Pro Max. Okay, so let's see how they perform next to each other in the RAM management. Let's see the difference here. We're going to go on both of them into, let me back it out a little bit. We're going to go into speedtest.net. We'll go into iMovie. We'll go into camera. Slower on the tennis max there. 3D Mark, pretty good. It pops those animations faster on the 15 Pro Max as expected. There we go. We're getting a reload there. We're not even going to wait for him. If it reloads, we're not waiting for him because we already did that. You could see two reloads so far for the 4 gig of RAM. Three reloads. Four reloads. Five now. We'll go into X and instagram and you can see with the basic apps hold on that wasn't the same one with the basic apps not a major difference there nothing on the basic apps so the third party apps if you have a lot of third party apps open the tennis max cannot or i don't know if it cannot but it doesn't hold them um it's getting closed out in the background only 3.67 gigs ram 7.47 but it's not only that, it's the combination of the older CPU with less RAM at a lower clock speed. You know, it's just not as quick as the 15 Pro Max. So even in reloading apps, you're gonna you're not gonna have as blistering fast of multitasking if you're switching between those applications on the 10s Max. So I think this Geekbench test alone is proof of like how much more powerful the 15 Pro Max is. It took so much longer on the tennis max which is expected but it was like way more than i thought it was going to be it was like a good five minutes okay not five minutes like about four minutes longer but you can see more than doubling the score of course we're more than double the years away we're five that's more than two which would be <laughs> way more so if we go to the multi-core score they've improved this several times over as well but it's not quite five times 
faster, that would be over 10,000 on the multi-core. So it seems that Apple has slowed the progression of um, just year-over-year performance gains to focus on some other areas like the camera, for example, because if we were, this is five years old, if we were five times better, then this would be like a 5,000 single and this would be like a 10,000 multi-core. So it's not quite five times better, but it's still really good. Let's go ahead and do a wildlife extreme test. Now, this is really going to push the 10s max because the 10s max the recommendation is wildlife regular so you can see we're already in the graphics here on the 15 pro max this is going to be a major leap for you if you like to play games on your phone you're probably noticing the 10s max gets a little warm and a little bit stuttery um, especially when you put on more than medium graphics so i'll be back when they're done okay so final wildlife extreme scores are in and wow 23.8 fps versus six that is pretty terrible for the 10s Max right now when it comes to a graphically demanding game. This can only score better than 18% of all devices on the market that do tests for 3D Mark, Wildlife Extreme. Yeah, so if you're planning on doing any heavy gaming, you can still run it, but um, probably at lower graphic settings, and it could get choppy here and there. The 15 Pro Max is ready to take on console level games on your day to day if you prefer to do something like that with a ridiculous 3981. I've actually got over 4,000 and this score is better than 90% of all devices. I'm guessing those other 10% of devices are going to be phones that are specifically designed to game like those gaming phones with like 16 gigs RAM, 12 gigs RAM. Um, so yeah, those are probably the phones beating this. Other than that, this is going to be one of the best out there with some of the best titles on the market as well due to iOS. Okay, so I'm going to do a internet speed test with this very popular speedtest.net application. Um, I think it's just called speed test now, but let's go ahead and click go here. We're going to be on the same, uh, the same network here, so it should be similar. Let's see if this phone actually can pull in better speeds than the 15 pro max or if it's just going to give you the same stuff and you can see we're getting around 255 260 270 down i'm going to finish around 300 and about 312 down now on the upload this is much slower obviously than the download but you can see we're getting around 16 and again this is going to vary this is not a test for that's going to need your phone to do this if you have a faster internet connection than me or a slower one you are going to get different speeds but we're just trying to see if on the same network do we get the same performance on the 10s max which would mean that when using internet you'll get a similar speed and downloading pages and stuff so yeah it looks like the Wow, it looks like the 10s Max can definitely pull in around the same performance. And it's coming from the same place. Wow, this is insane. This actually downloaded better. Had better download. That doesn't mean that it's always going to be faster, but it had that better download in this, this scenario right here. And looks like it's going to do better. Wow, it did better on the upload as well. So 10s Max, at the end of the day, can perform about the same and network speeds, um, not in terms of 5G though, because there is no 5G. So mobile performance, the iPhone 15 Pro Max will destroy 10s Max. So let's see how we do get the 4 GT in here. Let's go ahead and see how we'll do on the camera launch. Three, two, actually I have to close these because they were open already. Let me go ahead and close them out. And I'll close this one out for 10s Max or 15 Pro Max. Three, two, go. Different cameras. Hold on. We'll have to do that one more time. Three, two, go. Was that the 10s Max or was that me pressing it too fast? Three, two, go. Okay, we'll do it again. That was the 15 Pro Max. Three, two, go. Okay, yeah. That's twice in a row now. 15 Pro Max. Three, two, go. Yeah, even if I press it exactly the same. Hold on, that one wasn't the same. <laughs> that was 3D Touch. Even if I press it exactly the same, 10s Max a little bit slower. Shutter speed, pretty much the same. iPhones have fat, fast shutter speeds forever. And uh, that's going to wrap it up here. It looks like the 15 Pro Max is leaps and bounds faster as you would have expected. 
Well, you probably came here to see how well the five-year-old iPhone XS Max is performing, and I would say it's good enough, decent enough for day-to-day -day use, but it's definitely not a uh, beast performer if you want to do some heavy graphic games or you want to do a lot of app switching because the RAM is too low for doing heavier use now. So it's probably time to upgrade, but if you can't upgrade right now, you'll still be fine on the Tennis Max if you got to wait six months or a year to get the next 16 model. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.